Indonesia, the country of the equator, which has almost 17,500 islands, has its own challenges in meeting the energy needs of its population spread across these islands. Regardless of the world oil price, the cost of procuring fuel is difficult to suppress because of the expensive transportation problem. And it's not only a matter of cost, but also guaranteeing the availability of fuel in small islands is a challenge because the high tide season is enough to stop the delivery of fuel to these islands. On the other hand, we also have tremendous potential to overcome this problem with our local wisdom. There are vegetable oil producing plants that can grow in all regions of this country, even in the most arid regions. That is a Tamanu plant that can even grow on the coast with salty water. The oil from Tamanu is ideal for local fuels because it is not edible so it does not compete with food, nor does it compete with agricultural land or forests because it can be planted on critical and very critical lands, of which in Indonesia there are now 14 million hectares where other plants are reluctant to grow. The kernel of the Tamanu seed has a very high oil content, up to 70% of the kernel's dry weight. Tamanu oil is also relatively easy to be extracted and refined for fuel. To process Tamanu oil into the best quality fuel called drop-in biofuels, namely biofuels that can 100% directly replace fossil fuels. The technology is also mature because it has been used in fossil fuels refineries for the last few decades. This technology, called fluid catalytic cracking or FCC, now can be made on a micro scale without reducing its effectiveness and efficiency. We can build this FCC-based micro-refinery on every island to the smallest one that still requires diesel, gasoline, LPG and even jet fuel, if the only way to reach the island is by air. The smallest micro-refinery that we have designed can even be run for a village level with only a few hundred people inhabitants. If the raw material for oil is not available or insufficient, it can also be replaced with bio-oil which is processed from lignus elulis biomass that can still be grown on site either from agricultural waste or energy crops that are intentionally planted for this purpose, such as napier grass etc. With the technology called thermocatalytic reforming or DCR, lignocellulosic biomass can be processed into high-quality bio-oil, low in oxygen and has an energy content close to that of vegetable oil. This bio-oil can then be processed with the FCC to become drop-in biofuels. Another technology that we are also developing is the manufacture of this drop biofuel through an enzymatic process. It is inspired by the cheese making process, where for more than 7000 years humans have been able to coagulate the proteins in milk into cheese, using chymosin, a group of protease enzymes, also known as rennet, which is derived from the stomach of livestock. In the stomach of our livestock is not only rennet, but also thousands of other enzymes. If we can take only three for example, namely phosphatase, lipase and decarboxylase, then we will be able to make drop-in biofuels as easy as making cheese. Not only from the stomach of our livestock, these enzymes can also be produced by certain microbes such as fungi, bacteria and also microalgae. Similar to making cheese which does not require sophisticated machines, Making drop-in biofuels through an enzyme process also does not require expensive plants and machineries because the enzymatic process does not require high temperatures and pressures. With this small and simple machine that we call the multi-purpose reactor, MPR, for example, most people will be able to make high-quality fuel, drop in their own biofuels, just as easily as they make cheese. With the three main technologies that we introduce, namely FCC, TCR and MPR, we can present the era of local fuel, namely fuel that is produced using local raw materials and used in the same area as the production area. In this way, every inch of the country's territory will have the same opportunity to advance, because it is not only energy independence that is presented through this local fuel, but also the opportunity for the wider community to be directly involved in the energy economy, the second most important economic sector after food. This local fuel concept was initiated and presented by New Energy Asia. Interested institutions and corporations can contact us at ceo at new.asia or via our web at www.new.asia.